Hello and welcome to today's video. I do apologize for my voice as I'm recovering from a cold. Today is a big day for me because this will be my first project I try to fix a truly broken graphic card. I knowingly purchased this defective Diamond Monster 3D Accelerator, fully aware that it would require more advanced troubleshooting. This won't be a simple BIOS flash like I have done a couple of times before, because Voodoo and Voodoo 2 cards do not have AVGA BIOS. I am both excited and nervous to see if I can bring it back to life. It's a challenge I'm willing to accept and hopefully learn something new and provide enjoyable content to you, my viewers. You also helped my channel cross 1 million views since I started the channel about 2 years ago. I am really happy to have achieved this milestone. Thank you for being such a great audience and for watching, commenting, subscribing and liking my videos. Now let's have a look at this voodoo card from Diamond Multimedia. It is the famous Monster 3D, which for sure has seen better days. There are a few bent pins on the main graphic chips touching neighboring pins and some bad corrosion on one of the memory chips belonging to the texture mapping unit. A few missing or damaged capacitors are no longer a surprise for cards that seem to have been rescued from a pile of old hardware destined to be recycled. At least this is what I imagine where this card comes from, otherwise I could not explain those deep scratches mainly found on the back of the card. The solder mask did well protecting most of the copper traces, except here where the trace has been cut. I am planning to remove all four memory chips belonging to the texture mapping unit and add sockets to the card. In case the original memory is defective, after I attempt to salvage it, I can easily replace it with another set of memory chips without the need to desolder the memory again. Another reason I want to have the sockets is that I can use this card to test memory ICs in the future. But before we get into the repair, a quick word from my sponsor. PCBWay offers a wide variety of services including PCB manufacturing, 3D printing and CNC machining. So far I have used their PCB services for multiple projects and without PCBWay I could not have brought you the Voodoo Memory Upgrade Board or the 30 pin SIM module that is capable to run EDO as FPM memory. You can find both projects on PCBWay's shared project space where you can order the PCBs of both projects directly. Use the link in the video description to sign up with PCBWay.com and secure your 5 US dollar welcome bonus if you're a new customer. Have a look at PCBWay.com and turn your projects into reality. Let's use the microscope and have a look at the side with the graphic chips. In total the Diamond Monster 3D should have 10 aluminum surface mounted capacitors. But on my card only 7 are left, some of which are badly damaged. Unfortunately I do not have enough spares and have to salvage a few of the original capacitors during this repair. Then there are bent pins on both graphic chips. The frame buffer chip has one bent pin. The texture mapping unit has two locations where pins are bent. I hope that none of the touching pins are related to power delivery because it could end up destroying the chip when powered on. I do expect this card to have been powered on in this state by the previous owner because he mentioned that this card is not working. So hopefully we are lucky and none of the 3DFX chips are damaged. The third issue on this side of the card is the memory. This chip which belongs to the texture mapping unit has bad corrosion, most likely from water. I hope the traces on the PCB have enough substance left to be rescued. When we turn the card around, we see deep scratches in the solder mask. It appears that this card might have been stored with other hardware intended for recycling. It's hard to believe that such extensive damage could result from casual storage alone. There is even this one trace that has been broken and needs to be reconnected. While looking over the SMDs I have seen this spot, labeled L10, missing a component. A quick google search reveals that SMDs labeled with the letter L seem to be inductors. There are similar components and setups around the missing component that look identical. So I guess we are missing one of those black caps. I don't know the value of the inductor and I don't have spares anyway. Therefore I will borrow a similar looking component from another voodoo card for this project. Time to get the soldering iron out. I will start by removing all aluminum electrolytic capacitors. Many of those caps look beaten up and I need to figure out which ones I can salvage since I don't have enough spares to replace them all. I will check each of them with a multimeter to determine their capacitance and pick 3 that are closest to the rated value. After removing the capacitors from the card I can proceed to use hot air to carefully remove the memory located near the TMU chip. There are 4 to 5 pins that are badly corroded on this last memory IC. Removing this chip requires extra caution as the corrosion may have weakened the pads on the PCB, increasing the risk of accidentally tearing them off. 
I just make sure the solder is melted properly before moving the chip aside. And then I move on removing the remaining three memory chips. Now that the memory ICs are off the board, I can clean the pads in preparation for the memory sockets. This area here, however, looks like a massive headache. The corrosion has gotten between the memory pins and the board pads, covering them entirely. If we cut the corrosion in time, we may be able to restore the pads. The process I apply here is quite simple. Apply fresh solder and gently scrub over the corroded pad multiple times with a soldering iron. After that, I use a wick to remove the solder and repeat the process. You will see that with each pass, more solder gets stuck to the pad. To my surprise, I was able to successfully recover all the corroded pads using this technique. You may have spotted the discoloration next to the pads where the solder mask starts to cover the copper traces. The corrosion most likely has spread there too and sits between the solder mask and the copper traces. A few passes with a wick remove the thin layer of solder mask above the traces and expose the cleaned copper. We will cover them again later with fresh solder mask before we add the memory sockets. The last problem to fix on this side is the bent pins. I tried to straighten the first pin with a needle. That worked, but because the needle is short, it was quite difficult to get a good grip and apply the correct force. For the remaining pins, I decided to change tools and use one of my very fine tweezers. They work perfectly for this type of work and fit right in the gap between two of those pins. Still, patience and caution will be required to not cause more damage. That reminds me of the time when one of you told me once in the comments, success is when you fixed one more thing that you have broken. And this is the last pin at the corner of this chip that needs to be straightened. I really hope that those touching pins did not cause damage to the graphic chips. Now let's turn the card around and have a look at this broken trace. As you can see, the copper trace is there. It's just bent backwards. I will just bend the trace back to follow the original orientation and fill any gap with a nice little solder bridge. Later, when we apply solder mask, I need to make sure to cover this trace properly. It is a bit taller than the other traces because of the extra solder. Let me finalize the soldering work on this side by also adding the missing inductor. I will take it from this damaged MaxiGamer 3D. The TMU chip of this card is badly damaged. It actually misses 5 pins. Hit the like button of this video if you like to see more retro hardware repair videos, including an attempt to fix this video card. Now, I'm pretty sure some of you may disagree using a replacement part from a different graphic card, especially if we have no clue about the exact value or model number of the component. And you're probably right, but I do not have another Diamond Monster 3D that can serve as a donor. All I can tell you is that the resistance of this component is close to zero, which is the expected value of an inductor. And it is identical to the components on the Monster 3D. So I'm pretty confident that this is the component we need on the diamond card. To protect the exposed copper traces caused by the scratches, I will apply fresh solder mask on those areas. Unfortunately, I have to use dark green solder mask. It is not a perfect match, but this is the only green color I have which is somewhat close to the color of the PCB. I will also cover the fixed trace where I had to bridge a tiny gap with solder. With the solder mask cured on this side of the card, we can now turn our attention to the other side of the card and apply the same dark green solder mask around the area where the corrosion around the memory chips was located. Off camera I verified that each of those pads do make contact with one of the pins on the texture mapping unit using a multimeter. And I'm happy to report that all pads that had severe corrosion have a connection to the TMU chip. Solder mask is cured using UV light. During the day, I would place the card outside for about 15 minutes and let the sun do the work. Unfortunately, it's night time and I have to use a UV lamp. After the solder mask has hardened, I can proceed with soldering the memory sockets onto the card. I will be using the thinnest soldering tip available to me. This was a tedious job due to the space limitation and the limited heat output the thin solder tip can provide. One touch with a soldering iron and a piece of the socket melts away. A steady hand is a real benefit here. All that's left are the capacitors which have to be added back to the card. I measured the original 7 capacitors and all were still in working condition. Even the ones that were totally beaten up. Nevertheless, I only picked those 3 capacitors from the old batch and added 7 from my spare parts. I may replace those 3 when I get a batch of new capacitors, but for now they have to be sufficient. With all the capacitors back on the card, we can finally reinstall the memory. Oh, the memory. 
I forgot about those. What a mess. I will use the same technique to clean the pins that I used to clean the pads. Some flux, solder and a wick. The corroded chip required 2-3 to three passes. The rest just needed a wick down. I did this off camera, but the result is great and I am not worried about using those memory chips in this nicely cleaned card. We have finally reached the point where we can test this card for the very first time. Will it work right away or do you think I have missed something? Well, we will find out now. I am using a Pentium 3 1GHz and Windows 98 second edition as a test system. Well, the good news is we get a picture and the power supply did not trip the overcurrent protection. So I guess we should be good. In the device manager, the card seems to be detected. That's amazing. But I'm really surprised that I didn't encounter any more issues. Let me install the Diamond Monster 3D drivers and see what we get. After a restart, the Diamond Multimedia Monster 3D appears in the device manager. However... When I try to run 3 Mark 99 I get an error message that there is no DirectX 6 compatible 3D accelerator available. I guess the joy of not encountering more problems was a bit premature. The Diamond driver panel has some details about driver files and reports that we have 2MB frame buffer as well as 2MB texture mapping memory. In Windows the card seems to be installed properly and nowhere is a fault reported. But the moment I try to run a 3D accelerated application, we crash to a colored screen or the system freezes completely. One time after starting Unreal, I got this blue screen. And any time after that, the screen was green. I can exit the application using Ctrl Alt and Delete, but no 3D scene was ever rendered. I tried the card with different drivers, but nothing seems to help. The same behavior as before. Unreal crashes with the same green colored screen. Hardware Info for DOS reports the Voodoo card to be present, but then the original Tomb Raider for DOS refuses to start. Clearly there is still something wrong with this Diamond Monster 3D. At this point it is hard to know exactly what is going on. Luckily there are tools available that can help debug a Voodoo card. The 3DFX debugging tool called Mojo is one of those helpful tools. Unfortunately when I start the application all I get is a black screen. The entire VGA signal is lost and the system does not recover. In Windows, the tool exhibits the same behavior. A black screen that can only be recovered by pressing the reset switch. Luckily, there is an option to set environment variables in the auto exec but that allow redirecting the output of the Mojo tool to a text file rather than the command line. After a reboot, I just need to start an application that initializes the Voodoo card. Since I am in Windows, let me try Unreal one more time. And of course, we get the same green screen during the application crash. Let's have a look at the output file. Hmm, there is some information here, but it doesn't tell me much. Here is maybe something. The driver wants to reset the TMUs after a clock change. But the next line informs us that resetting the TMUs has failed. There is also something about setting the graphics clock up to 60 MHz. Not sure what this is all about, but I am pretty sure that 60 MHz is a bit too much for those Voodoo cards. Anyway, from this debug output I cannot identify the issue. For comparison, here is an output from a working Orchid Righteous 3D. Instead of the error message, we immediately see some device info and details about the video settings. Nowhere is mentioned that the TMUs have to be reset. And the graphics clock can be set up to 50 MHz. That sounds more reasonable. At that point I changed the memory just to be sure it isn't the root cause of this problem. But nothing changed with the known good memory chips. The card still didn't work. Then I changed the platform because I read somewhere that some Voodoo cards didn't play nice with a front side bus of 100MHz or higher. Even though the PCI bus is clocked at 33MHz. Unfortunately the behavior of the Monster 3D remained unchanged. I could start speculating, but instead let's rather have another look at the card under the microscope. First, I tested both 3DFX chips for cold or broken solder joints. One loose pin could easily be the root cause of the issues we are facing. But after about 15 minutes I have not found a single loose pin. There must be something else. Maybe there is still an issue at the back of the card. There were deep scratches after all. Maybe I have missed something. Another broken trace. Or a missing component could be the reason. Well, I didn't have to look around for a long time. Here we can see the cracked housing of a capacitor. 
But somehow, I am not convinced that this is the root cause of our problem. If it is a bypass capacitor, the card would still be working without it. But maybe it's a good idea to look for other cracked components. Oh, look here, the black SMD. This looks like it's cracked too. This could be it. This black resistor is cracked and could be the reason for our Voodoo card not working. Yeah, this is definitely broken. Must have been from a harsh impact to shatter this little resistor. I looked up the correct value from another image that I found online. The number of this resistor is 101, which is a 100 ohm resistor. Luckily, I happen to have a full set of SMD resistors and there is one sleeve of 100 ohms included. That should be an easy fix. After cleaning up the pads, I can add this new component and make it look like fresh out of the factory. I will also replace the 10 nanofarad capacitor, but I will do this off camera. Okay, there is no need to wait any longer. The card is back in the test system and the first thing I want to try is the Mojo debugging tool in DOS. We only got blank screens before. Let's hope that this time it's different. Uh, oh. Hey, we get an output! The card returns some details. And although it looks like we have some missing information at the top, the information for the Voodoo board is complete. Listed are the FBI and one TMU chip with 2MB of memory each. Could it be that this Diamond Monster 3D works now? There is a quick way to find out. Tomb Raider in DOS. It doesn't require any Windows drivers. If the game starts in 3DFX mode, then we can be certain that this card is finally working. And we have a 3DFX logo. What an amazing turn of events. I almost gave up on this card. I am sure we are running in glide mode because we were greeted with a 3DFX logo, but also because we can see the frame counter in the top left corner. If you want to see another video about Tomb Raider, you can check out the video linked in the top right corner. I don't want to prematurely declare victory, so let's check a few Windows benchmarks. Remember that I'm still using a Pentium 200, just in case you're wondering about the low benchmark scores. 3 Mark 99 finally completes without errors and with a score of 9.5 in the race benchmark. Unreal also starts now without crashing to a green screen, with a final score of 18.5 frames per second at a resolution of 512 by 384. I am overly happy that this project came to a successful conclusion, especially because I almost gave up. But now, I am happy to have a beautiful Diamond Monster 3D, fully working. I also tested the original memory. And guess what? The original memory works too. No crashes, no artifacts or anything else that should not happen. I even managed to play one round of Unreal Tournament. I learned a lot during this project and I hope you enjoyed the journey as well. If you haven't already done so, please hit the like button of this video. This will help the channel grow and keep me motivated. If you want to get notified when I upload new content, then subscribe to my channel and activate the bell, so you will never miss a future video. And if you can and want to support this channel even further, you can check out my Patreon account, to which you will find a link in the video description. You guys are awesome and your contributions help me purchase interesting old hardware to tinker with. Thank you for that. And with this, we have reached the end of this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.